It's time for the Take a Seat podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Howell. Please take a seat. Good morning, everybody. This is Take a Seat TV. I'm your host, Kevin Howell, and I've got an exciting entrepreneur this morning. Uh, he's done some amazing things over the last six months. You're going to love him. You're going to love the wisdom bombs he's going to drop. So please comment, uh, ask him questions. Uh, we're going to be sharing his journey from where he started to building a, a uh, national company with franchises all opening up all over the place. So without further ado, let's get uh, Brandon involved. Good morning, Brandon Alas from New Human. How are you doing? Kevin, thanks so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Now, what an honor it is. We meet again. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes, so Brandon, I was telling you earlier on, earlier on in the pre, pre-show interview, uh, you used to force me to see you in the mornings because I paid you to torture me. But now the only way we can talk is to invite you to my TV show. So it's good to have you here in a different forum. What a blessing. Thank you so much. I, I, appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate those beautiful comments. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. Thank you. okay. Brandon, so quickly for the people that don't know you, just give us, tell us something about yourself. Like uh, what kind of person are you? Hmm. Well, I have, I have a, a firm belief system um, in, in, in purpose and vision. I think uh, these, are, these are fundamental values uh, that we as human beings all need to start working on. The world, the world needs better, better people. A uh, better world needs better people. And I think, um, you know, that work on self-consciousness, that awakening, you know, of each individual is fundamental if we're to prevent the, the current sort of evolutionary cognitive decline that I think is occurring in the world. So I'm, what I am really is a person who would like to leave uh, a legacy. I, I'm a person who would like uh, to, you know, keep doing this inner engineering and work harder on myself and better myself. So, that, so there's no real way to describe me other than, you know, just, just somebody that's, that's in motion and following his purpose. All right. Uh, Brandon, yeah, no, it's, it was such a good description, and you, you always use these very big words. And um, so, I want to just unpack. I want you to unpack the, uh, the the cognitive decline that you see. What does it actually mean for the guy on the street? Are we becoming stupid? Is that what is that what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the so so evolutionary uh, game theory is a is an interesting theory which clearly depicts that. Um, survival in the human species is currently trumping truth. Um, what, what this means is that, is that it, unfortunately, we will ev- continue to evolve in a, in a way that survival means everything. And this could potentially end up in a sort of a Mad Max environment, uh, which is definitely not what we want to do if we want to go to Mars or if Elon wants to take us as an, you know, out there as an interplanetary species. So what we really need is to, to make sure that we, we follow truth and that we, we understand science correctly um, and that everybody plays a role in, in that self-awakening, you know, that, that self-improvement, that inner engineering that, that everybody needs because if we don't follow this, this path, um, it, it's going to be a sad, sad case in, in, in the not-too-distant future. Right. So, Brandon, th- that obviously led to your business. So, quickly tell us about your business. Yeah. What's it called and what, what do you guys actually do? So, so so New Human is really formatted on that basis. Um, you know, a better world needs better people. So, so we're really about, um, you know, help, helping individuals, you know, transform their minds uh, and, their, and their bodies. Um, and that's why we built the structure. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't a dream. And, and I'd just like to reiterate that because a lot of parents tell their kids, you know, just, just follow your dream. In my opinion, it's really poor advice. You can't follow a dream, but you can build dreams. I think that's important to understand the difference. You work on a dream, and, and dreams take you know, time, experience, you know, work ethic. There's a combination of inner engineering there and self-awareness that, that build dreams. And once you build these dreams, you, know, you, you, you start realizing you know, what your purpose is and where you're going. And with New Human, you know, that's what it was really all about. I wanted to invent a new category um, uh, you know, in the industry of, of health and wellness. And th- this new category is, is called uh, lifestyle medicine. And when you invent a new category in, in business, you're, you're mitigating that risk of competitors. So you, you don't really have competitors if you're inventing new categories. 
So what we really need is we need our youth to we need our youth to be really following through on on on, on making new things, on building new things, innovating new ideas. Because what people don't realize is those who innovate the fastest are the most successful. It's about fast innovation, fast and effective right. innovation. Love so it. it's, yeah, so that's what Newman was all about. And Newman, we built these clinics so that we can offer, you know, a host of scientific tests um, as well as photobiomodulation therapy. This is, this is light medicine. Not a lot of people are aware of how effective medical light treatment is. It is incredibly effective and we're using it in, um, we're using it in neurogenesis and neuroplasticity to rewire the brain to, to work on sort of the, the hardware, the subconscious of the brain to, to help you make better decisions. Unfortunately, we, we live in a world where we think that diets are going to solve the problem. This is not the case. You know, it's a lifestyle change. It's the way you think about food that makes a difference, you know. And it's, it must not be a conscious thought. It's got to be a subconscious reprogram. Um, and that's how we use our light therapy. You know, we have a red and yellow light therapy. There are, there are different spectrums. And they all play a different role in, 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 in depression, anxiety. Um, you know, they're using it now in the United States to treat Alzheimer's and, and some other seriously serious neurological conditions. So right. what we've done is we've really wrapped up this package um, where we treat people while they're training. And so we're the first in the world, literally, to do this. Um, and um, I think that's why we're getting so much international attention as well at the moment, which is we're very fortunate for that. Um, but yeah, it's exciting times and, and this obviously led to me wanting to innovate more and new, unique things. Um, and, and this is what we're currently doing. You know, when you start looking at science and epigenetics, we see that in the environment signals the genes. So if we're building better environments for people, we're going to have, you know, better gene function and, and how we evolve is going to definitely be, um, you know, imperative to, as I said, um, this, this stopping this cognitive decline <laughs> that's occurring in the world today. Right. Yeah. So so just for 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 the practical side of things, how how would you how does that pan out in the actual facility? Because I mean when you walk in as a client and you hear about all these big words and the science behind it, you, you can get quite alarmed and scared about what you know what's going to happen it almost feels like someone's going to plug a device into my mind <laughs> and then we're going to we're going to control my my yeah. my psyche but it's not that what do you like what is the practicality behind this when i walk into a facility so so really it is is you'd walk in and we'd we have an we don't believe in showers so we have an ozone shower process um we know you know that ozone is highly beneficial in entering the viral capsid cell disrupting mrna and dna so you're basically um, taking sort of an ozone shower that sort of cleans off the bacteria and pathogens. You're then walking into a clinic that during the night we've got what is called UVC lighting. Um, this UVC lighting basically destroys all pathogens in the facility. So there's no more really sort of hand washing and spraying pest, you know, chemicals on, 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 the, on the equipment and that, uh, which, which can obviously cause a toxic reaction in time. Um, so from there, uh, you're training under this, bio, this, this, this light technology where we're treating, treating you on an intracellular level to improve your health and potentially, you know, curb any type of disease trend that, that may be affecting you, perhaps diabetes or, 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 or any neurological condition like depression or anxiety. Um, and, of course, uh, you have access to some incredible scientific tests that we have available, uh, these scientific tests, uh, range from mineral analysis of the human body on an intracellular level, um, amino acid, organic acid profiling. Um, you know, we do fecal testing for GI map guts and all kinds of things. So uh, a whole host of different types of tests that we can offer people so that they can really start understanding the importance of, of improving their quality of life. You know, Kevin, quality of life is everything. If, if you understood the value of the quality of life, you would not be spending or you wouldn't be wasting money anywhere else other than on your health that I can assure you. People don't right. know how, how detrimental it is because you could be super successful, but if you've got poor quality of life, it's a terrible thing. It's a terrible Absolutely. show. And it's Absolutely. a hell of a show. Yep. 
And, and Brandon, you know what? When I was at your facility, I the, the one thing that struck me was the awareness of my physiology. Physiology. I, I became so aware of what my body was doing, and I and I made that link between my performance and my body. And I started reading up on this stuff, and you told me about the mitochondria, and it became like a, a, a eight months journey of trying to figure out what what is wrong with me. Um, but it was so amazing to make that connection, and you're so right because um, it's almost like most of the diseases we see, and I think that's what you're saying, are, are metabolic diseases. And and there's so much you can do with this. You know, it's it's a case of what you put in your mouth is going to determine the quality of your life. And it's just, and also obviously the exercise part. But I never understood the link between that quality of life and nutrition and exercise. It's uh, and you guys have put your finger on that. Yeah, no, uh, I appreciate that, Kevin. You know, what a lot of people don't realize is that, of course, diet is fundamental, but it's the habitual processing, you know, that you have to repeat. You have to build habits and, and good habits. But most importantly, on an intracellular level, if I could give a small example. You know, there, if you've got a really poor cell permeability, in other words, you know, the, the, the movement of, for example, glucose in and out of the cell is, is not functioning correctly due to sort of the calcification of the cell, you're, you're going to struggle to, to be healthy, you know, and, and then eating food plays a specific role, but how your body uptakes that food on an intracellular level is just as important. And people don't understand that. And that's what we try to work on here is from an intracellular level, we start working on repairing the cell, repairing the body, um, and, of course, going forward from there. Okay, got it, got it. Brandon, listen, we're going to do a quick ad break, and then we'll be back. I want to talk to you about your entrepreneurship and your journey as an entrepreneur. Be back with you now. Right, Brandon, so tell me, um, where did this entrepreneurial drive come from? I mean, it, it, obviously, at some stage in your life, you realized, well, I can sell something. I can make some money with the skills I have. Where did that come from? Uh, you know, Kevin, <clears throat> to, to do original work, you don't necessarily need to know something that, that nobody else knows. You just need to believe in something that nobody else believes in. You know? I love that. love that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's really where, where it all began. You know, I believe in something. Um, I believe in, 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 in vision and I believe in purpose. You know, uh, that's why I love what you're doing with, with, with teaching people about the importance of purpose. You must okay. know your purpose. If you do not know your purpose, then you're going to lose that connection, you know, to, to life. You, purpose is everything in life. Um, right. And once you understand that purpose, um, the key then is to get together you know, like-minded individual team of, uh, you know, people, entrepreneurs together um, who believe in the same vision at the end of the day. So I have an incredible team of people that work for me. I, New Human, I am the founder, but New Human I owe to the incredible group of people that work alongside me, you know, the, the specialists, the, you know, these individuals, you know, I cherish them, I love them, I care for them. Um, and to be to be quite honest with you, you know, they understand the importance of the vision, and they work coherently together, uh, you know, to, to to achieve this vision. And and this has definitely jumped New Human into a, sort of a new plane of existence. There's no doubt. Right. And how big is the team right now, uh, Brennan? Well, the team's pretty big. We have we have quite a few people that are, are plugging in that basically work under New Human. I'd probably say around seventy people at this stage. Wow, that's a big show. That's a big show. Yes. Love it. Love it's it. Pretty big. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right, Thank Brandon. Tell me, how did you decide initially on the lo location for your business? I mean, for any young entrepreneur that wants to start, how did you decide this is the spot where we're going to start? <clears throat> I think case if, I live in the area and that's where I start. <laughs> I, I, I think, you know, it's a difficult question because at the end of the day, um, you, you know, one has to deal with a whole host of 
you know, uh, a whole host of variables there from landlords to, to uh, you, you know, to, to how close you are to home, etc. But remember, New Human is a, it's a, it, there's a, a, a franchise or model and these franchisees, you know, they're located in different areas in South Africa. So obviously, we we have a company that finds the best locations for us, um, and um, they do a study on that. And of course, based on that study, we then um, uh, offer these potential locations to our our franchisees. Okay, and how and how important is location for 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 any business? In your extremely, view? extremely important, specifically in the franchise model. Um, location is everything. Um, right. You need to know you're in the right LSM. I think that's very important, and you need to know your target market, and you need to you need to have that empathy. I think as an entrepreneur, um, to, to be able to see the world through other people's eyes. So you need to know what is their target market, who do they want to you know address. Um, so so these things are important. You know. Um, yeah. Got it. So, Brandon, in terms of what motivates you, I want to know what, you know, at the moment, what best motivates you right now, but also how has that changed from when you started? Obviously, there was a different motivation when you started or could have been. Has that changed over, over the years? I, th I think motivation, motivation is very, is, is a short, is, is a word for short term, you know, goals. Um I think if you have a vision as to what you want to do in your in your journey of life, you know, um, this makes a huge difference because I, I do set my goals astronomically high, astronomically high. Uh, I can honestly say, and 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 if I fail at them, I'm still failing above everybody else's success. Um, Love it. And, I, <laughs> and I think people are are afraid. They're afraid to set really high goals. They're they're afraid to. You know, to, to drive to, to to really absurd you know visions. Yep. I'll be honest with you, um, and, and I mentioned this before. You know, good stories always beat good spreadsheets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I love that because the, the, the truth is, um, you can have great maps in your business, and, and 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 everything can look wonderful. But at the end of the day, it, it's the leaders in your business that really stir up that emotion. You know, and people are attracted to that emotion. You know, they're, yeah. attracted, they're connected to that. And it's that connection, you know, that makes makes a big difference. So I think yeah. um, in a way I, I'm, I'm not really a, a motivated person because I think the, the word success is very relevant uh, to the individual. But, you know, success for me is really just, um, you know, making somebody else's life worth living um, and, 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 you know, understanding that for me it's important that we – we better the human species, um, and I think that's fundamental. Because if you're if you're in a position morally where you can improve uh, the, the species, you should be doing that. Um, and I think that's very important for me. So I think that's really what drives me. Um, yeah. And, and has the drive gotten more? Yes, absolutely. It's it's it's, it's amplified tremendously. Um, and and I think it's because I think everybody should have the right to be an engineer. To, to work on themselves, to better themselves, and to see right. that they can. That's the big thing. To make the choice, you know, that's fundamental right. for me. Right. And so you're saying you start with something small or a dream that you thought was big in the beginning, but as you're moving forward, this dream is getting bigger and bigger, and you have more motivation or more, you know, more energy for bigger things, or, you know, your, your mindset becomes able to handle bigger and bigger things. That, is that what you're saying? So, yeah, I have this... Um, I have this, this thing I say to myself often, um, you know, because obviously the bigger a company grows uh, when it's upscaling, the, the stress starts amplifying. There's a lot of things that need to get done. So I often say to myself, you know, um, uh, when the going gets tough, tonight I will be in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sleep again at some stage. <laughs> I'm going to sleep again, you know. Uh, and, and I tell you, it works wonderfully because at that moment, you know, you're, you're switching that mind 180 and you're thinking about bedtime and it's okay. You know, everything will be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Right. Yeah, but I mean, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the dream does change, you know, okay. and that's important. It's, it starts, it does start small. Um, and, and as you start seeing your own potential, uh, you, you engineer that dream and it becomes, and it changes. You know, what, what I thought New Human would be now, 
or, or what I what I initially thought it would be, it didn't end up being. It's something totally different um, and so much better. And and I and I honestly don't know where it's going to go, other than the fact that I know it's going to change the world at some point. Right. Yeah, and that's evident by you know if you would drive around in Pretoria and just see the shops popping up all over the place and you're opening up in in I think you said in Santon and some other areas, Dane Fern and so on. Yes. You can see the growth. You can see the excitement around the brand, and it's, and it's it's almost like it's the right time for this. And 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 I want to ask you about timing because Brandon, I, I recently I spoke to another entrepreneur, and we had this conversation about timing. And I just remembered that you know we have all these ideas, but there's a there's a space and time that stuff starts happening for you. How important how important is timing being around your ideas? No, I, I, super important. You know, and I and I. I try and say this uh, respectfully to those who suffered losses in COVID, but COVID was a big eye opener for me. You know, um, and I'm going to be a little controversial here. Um, you know, COVID. Yeah, that, COVID that, that, that's very normal for you, Brandon. <laughs> you don't have to give us a disclaimer. <laughs> COVID clearly displayed the the failure of the medical industry. That's what it did. Okay. Because so many people who had poor immunities passed away. And, and the reality is, is that that's what we should be focusing on. We should be focusing on disease prevention. And we shouldn't be focusing on treating disease once you attain disease. There should be a preventative measure. We should be funding research in this area, you know, in lifestyle medicine. This should be a huge drive, uh, you know, across the planet. And, you know, COVID, when, 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 when we got into lockdown, um, that's when I spent the most money. You know, I think my wife almost divorced me <laughs> at that point. But it's, it's really true. Um, timing is everything. You need, to, you need to know when it's the right time. Um, and everybody has great ideas. This, but it's very few who follow through on these ideas. And that's what we need to be teaching our youth in school. Because so many young people have phenomenal ideas. But they just don't follow through. You don't know? take action. Yeah, they, take action. we call it. Yeah, they pivot too quickly. The word yeah. pivot. I think that they, the minute they see, oh, it's a little bit difficult, they pivot to the next idea, and then they pivot to the next idea. You know. Yeah. Stop pivoting, youngsters. Why, Stop why did we? Why did we ever get? Where did we get that term from? How about sticking to your to your plan? <laughs> yeah, just follow through. There, there is a way. You know, find yeah. the solution. I, I think that's so important. You know, specifically so right. for. You know, because we got some really, we got some some, some some smart young people, but they need to be building. They need to be building things, new things. Yep. You know? Yep. Ideas are cheap. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So yeah, timing is everything. And and you know, one of the most important lessons as well that 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 this sort of COVID thing taught me was that you know people people they become panicky when 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 they fear that things are going to get difficult and they start dropping their prices. Let me tell you something. You should know how good your product is and that people should be paying more for it. People are too quickly drop their price. They're too quick to drop their prices based on panic and they're losing their competitive edge. When they do that, you're right. breaking your share value in your company. Right. Don't do that. Um, yep. And that's, that's so important. Know your worth and what you're offering people. That yep. is the difference. Yeah. So it's almost like your vision your vision doesn't change because of an outside event. It's not like someone can erase what you want and know. The vision didn't change. Not for you, Absolutely. not for any other business person. Absolutely. Right. I mean, it had COVID had zero effect on my business. Right. And right. and 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 I can I can honestly tell you, you, you should you should not be worrying about your competitors. You should be focusing on your vision. As long as you understand your vision and your purpose, everybody yep. else will fall in line with that. Uh, and you're so will your employees, and that's fundamental. Love it. All right, Brennan. So I want to know about your greatest entrepreneurial achievement so far. I know you're not done, but what has the greatest achievement been thus far? <clears throat> I think that there's a twofold answer here. I think my greatest achievement um, is, is, you know, the, the amount of inner engineering that I've put into my own self. I've, I've done a lot of investing in, in, in trying to be a better person and a, and a 
you know, and it's difficult, you know. Um, but inner engineering is, is so important for every human being out there. We need to have better people out there that are thinking out of the box um, and, and, and trying to build a better world. You know, it, it's unfortunately, you know, like I said, the, the world is, is it's tough, it's struggling. There are more neurological conditions than ever before. Anxiety, depression, these diseases are they're, they're causing a lot of problems in the world today and, and we need to work on ourselves. We need to understand that value of inner engineering and building a better human being um, for a better world. Um, so I think, you know, my greatest success is the ability to see my faults uh, in myself and try and better them, try and work on them every day to be better. Um, and the second greatest thing is the wife, my wife that I married, the woman that, that stands by my side. Uh, important. Yeah. Extremely important. Yeah. I can, I can honestly tell you, nobody will ever understand the value of, of a good wife behind a great man. This right. unbelievable. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful, Brenda. And she's an amazing woman. Um, we spoke, spoke about her earlier on. Her ability to organize and manage and you know tie together all these loose areas, loose loose ends uh, that all entrepreneurs cause. I mean, you guys, I mean, you, you just go out there and start stuff and and you hope to hell she's gonna pick up the pieces behind you. Um, and it works so well. I'll be honest with you, I think she she she's had a she's had a tough time with me. You know, I, I am a some people call me a mad scientist. I have a lot of crazy things that I do in my life, you know, you would know. Uh, my, my day started off with a lot of meditation and cold showers and all kinds of weird things. <laughs> and, uh, and and she's really just, you know, she's loved me for all of that, you know, and she's, she's been there for me and she definitely, from a business perspective, evolved um, into a human being that can that can really work in these high-stress environments. Um, and and it's, it's been an incredible journey for the both of us. Right, right. So, Brennan, um, if, if you think about a book, the book that has most inspired you in your business career, what would that be? I think, I think um, Tool of Titans uh, by Tim Ferriss, uh, one of my absolute favorite books. Um, and Sadhguru, Inner Engineering, another amazing book that I've read. Um, I try to read two, two books a month, uh, more or less, and um, most of them are all about sort of that sort of inward, inward thinking um, and um, I know that if I can better myself in my way of thinking, the business will grow. And I think that's really what it's all about. Um, we, we spend a lot of time on trying to build the structure of a, of a company, and, and we need that, of course, but you need to lead in the right way. And, that, and I think that's important, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and unfortunately, I have to be my unapologetic weird self, you know. Uh, we, we lack authenticity in the world today. <laughs> Right. We need, we need more authenticity. People are afraid to be weird and strange and different. Uh, yes. And, uh, and, and you 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 got to be authentic. Be yourself. You know. Absolutely. Otherwise, you never get anywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. Love that about you. Love the authenticity. It's always very very clear. Uh, so you were talking about your team, Brandon, and and your wife. And there's obviously many more people in the company. How important is that human factor? How, how 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 important is that to your company's success at the moment? So, so my team is my, my team is every morning. Um, my team gets a motivational uh, voice note from me um, uh, and, and a reassurance about the vision of the company. You need to right. keep reinforcing your team their purpose and their vision. You know, yep. and the vision of the company because every company needs a vision. If you don't have a vision, you're going to struggle. People out there uh, and you're. you're they need to relate to, to your vision. This is very important. Um, right. So we, we work in a, it's a tightly knit family of people, you know, that are working coherently for a singular vision. And I can tell you, um, it's fundamental. It is absolutely fundamental. It is the team that builds a company. It is not one individual. And entrepreneurs that are looking for that self-praise or that pat on the back, it's not gonna not happen. Gonna happen. It's not gonna happen, you know. Uh, you need to understand if you want to be successful, you have to work on your company, not in your company. And in order to work on your company, you need to work with these, with your team. You need to build a better team. You know, that's where you've got to start. And these, these people, they're, they're just phenomenal. I'm just, I'm so blessed to have 
you know, such driven young individuals, you know, that, that understand the vision and, they, and, and, and their purpose. Yeah. But they're all really they're extremely important. How do you choose these people? You've got some fantastic people. I mean, I, 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 I don't think I can think of any one of your staff members that I ever thought was not a person of character. So how do you choose these people? These are gems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, a, so we have a, an interesting um, process. You know, we, we have a, a, a stunning company, um, a green, green Marble Hall, that works with us. They sort of find us the, the silhouette of what we're looking for in an individual um, and then they, they send them to us and we, we sit down and we have an interesting conversation, you know. Um, I don't do um, the usual sort of interview, you know. Uh, for example, if the individual's name is Mark, I would say everybody likes Mark, but and then I'd sort of end it there and just see what happens, you know. <laughs> so, I like this. So, yeah, I, I try and see if people are out of the box thinkers. I want to see if, if if individuals, you know, have already had some part of in engineering and they're really thinking out of the box. Um, I don't, I don't care much for for individuals who who want to hide behind the concept of knowledge. You know, uh, knowledge is a very finite thing. Imagination is an infinite thing. You know, so I'd like to see that imagination in people. I like to see people who want to change the world, um, and, and and I really ask them those questions. And those are the that's how I choose them. You know, and, and right. I can honestly tell you, everybody on my team wants to be a part of changing the world. There's no doubt. Amazing, amazing, and it's obviously be, it's it's happened because of the constantly sharing of your vision. Every as you say, the messages going out every morning, discussions about the brand, what we're trying to achieve. That's what's driving it. Absolutely. Every single day for the past three years, and you can quote, you could, you could do your own research on this. There's no doubt. Every single morning for the past three years, there is a there is an educational message that goes out, you know, to my staff, um, and and they learn from it. You know, to reiterate the vision, and the purpose, and of course, a lesson for inner engineering to improve yourself. You know, something yeah. that you can live by because. What a lot of people don't realize is, is that in order to change habits, you need to continuously do things. We, we, we call this neuro-linguistic programming, you know, building habits, habitual training. Um, and, and, and if you keep reiterating things, people eventually start falling into that process, you know, and it just yeah. happens beautif beautifully yeah. by itself. Yeah. But I mean, there's, there's important things, you know, that, that, that a lot of leaders need to tell their people. Uh, for example, you know, don't be afraid to ask dumb questions. You know, I cannot tell you how profound just that statement is right. because you have staff members and, and some of them don't know and they're, they're, they might be curious or they might be worried that people are going to think they're silly or dumb for them. Yes. Never be afraid to tell your staff to, to please ask me dumb questions. Right. Ask the silly right. questions. Let's, let's get to the bottom of it because it, it really brings out some, some very important information. You know? Yes. And yeah. I do a lot of nightly planning with my staff. Um, so, 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 so nightly planning is, and, and this is this is so important. If did, you say, to, did, you, did you say nightmare planning? Nightmare, yes, nightmare. Oh my goodness! Tell us about that. <laughs> so, so what we do is uh, once a week. If I'm going to make a decision for the company, all right, uh, something that I feel we should do. So I get the core team together, and then I say to them, right, let's do some nightmare planning. If I make this decision. What is the worst possible outcome that is going to come from this decision? What is the worst possible outcome? And then we work back from there and we slowly start plugging in all the holes until we right. get to the point where we can make the decision. All right. Beautiful. So, yeah. And, and I, I sort of moved that over into the business. Originally, I, I used to live this way. So for myself as an individual, with everything I do in life, I always do, I always predict the worst possible outcome. And then I work my way back from that. So I've implemented right. that into my business structure as well. So nightmare planning is a big thing with us. Absolutely. You, uh, you, you, you obviously didn't use that methodology for planning your, your marriage. Am I right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's good marriage advice to start off with. Uh, what is the worst that can happen right here? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I get it and I love the concept because I think it forces people, your employees, to think about where are all those holes in our system? Where are the systems going to fail? Love that. Absolutely. Love that. 
you know, um, and I'll, I'll share something personal with you. I, I not, not only do I predict the worst possible outcome, but in my personal life, in my life, I have a, a board that's, that's inside my cupboard door. And in there, and I learned this from a fantastic book that I read as well, and that is that I put a month in a block until my predicted potential death. And every month that goes by, I cross it off. And it creates the sense of urgency in my mind every day I see this. I'm running out of time. I'm running right. out of time. You know, the most important commodity, it's going away, creates that sense of urgency and also engages all of my senses every day. I cannot tell you, life is an incredible gift. And, 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 and the problem is, People are missing the gift because they're not engaged in their life. They're, mm. they're zombies sort of living because of the pressures of Absolutely. life. Absolutely. You know, pressure. You need to engage every sense that you have, right. you know, all of your senses in every moment. And you only do this by real, the realization that it's going to end. So I sort of right. predict that end and then I go, okay, uh, as a result of me coming closer to my end, it's more important that I start enjoying every moment. Um, yep. And then what you find when you're more engaged, you tend to make better decisions, you yep. know, better decisions, and opportunities yep. become more clear to you. Yeah. Yeah. And you spoke about early on about purpose, and now you've made that connection again about you know living your life and finding finding that spot that in, in life where the magic starts happening. I'm going to take an ad break quickly, and we're going to come back and talk about purpose and how you view that in your employees. Be back now. Want to accelerate your life? Start by finding your purpose. Purpose has become somewhat of a cliche, but in recent years, research has shown that purpose is a tool that can be used to enjoy the abundant life. Yes, you too can become wealthy and live a meaningful life. We have developed an action-packed six weeks online course that takes you through six critical steps to start taking massive action towards your abundant life. Go to www.takeaseat.tv and click on Academy. Get ready to accelerate. Right, Brandon, so talk to us about purpose and your employees. And I, mean, I wanted to lead you into that this morning, but I mean, I think every strong entrepreneur knows this inherently, that I have to appoint people who understand purpose. So talk to us about how that's panned out in your business. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think it's one of the, one of our foundations. You know, I, every single day we reiterate, purpose um, and, and, and obviously purpose in the business environment but also personal purpose if you do not have purpose you're going to be living in the world of depression you're going to be living in a world of anxiety um, and you're going to struggle to perform when you lose purpose in life you're really losing life this mm. is I, I can really push it to that boundary mm. I, I, I often tell people there's a small little biohack here that you could use. At night time, when you feel like you're losing purpose, you know, as an individual, step outside, look up at the stars just for a moment. In your mind, you know, zoom out, come out of our solar system, see the planets, come out of our galaxy, see the vastness of the universe that you belong to. And, and, Zoom back in again to yourself and see the purpose that you really have, the connection in yep. life. You know, it is everything. You must have purpose. You right. Know, we are human beings who must have purpose. And in the business environment, my staff understand the importance of purpose. Every day we re reiterate their purpose in the company and, and why they are important to us and why we cherish them and love them and care for them. This is right. very, very important. Um, and if, if you can help them understand their purpose, I'm telling you, you're going to improve your company tremendously. Yeah. Um, people, people are too quick to, you know, fire and rehire. This is a major problem. You know, firing and rehiring is a, is, 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 is a way to cause great detriment to your company. You need to upscale people. You need to improve individuals because you will see that worth later on. If you're skilling up people and, and providing them with purpose, you know, and so forth, yeah. it's an incredible advantage in your company. Yeah. 
Yeah. So on the course, um, Brandon, we talk about uh, my definition of purpose is that space in life where you're maximizing all your natural abilities. You know, it's where the magic happens. I mean, you, you're an example of that, of using all your faculties in a specific area in life which you're passionate about, you're knowledgeable, knowledgeable about. There's no one that has more passion about that specific um, uh, topic and product. And and that's where the magic starts happening. So on on with employees, have you experienced that you've had employees in the company that are on, on the bus with you, but they're on the wrong seat because they're not functioning in within their natural abilities? Have you seen that happen in your business? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think a lot of a lot of employees that start with us, um, it's quite intimidating to start a new human. There's a lot of intellects that, that obviously work here. So it's, it's an intimidating process, but it takes a while for people to adjust and adapt. But, you know, people are afraid to, to as I say, to, to be themselves and, and to work, um, you know, to, to work on their, their, themselves efficiently and effectively. And they're, they're, if they're on the wrong seat, as you say, it's really just a, you know, a process where you provide them with their purpose and you put them on the right seat and you engage with them. You know, it, we have an egalitarian format in our business, but we still feed information top down. So it's important that people innovate. We encourage innovation in our company. We, we want people to come up with new ideas. And let me tell you, some of our best ideas have not come up from me. Um, Sadly to say, <laughs> some, some of our, our really good ideas have, have come up from other uh, employees. Um, right. And because they're encouraged to, to innovate. They're encouraged to step up. And, and we really, you know, we, 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 put, we put things in place which, which benefit them for, for innovation and fast and effective innovation. So, right. yes, I mean, you know, you, you will always have, you know, employees that, that – end up on the wrong seat, I think. But it's it's a matter of good leadership, good guidance, and helping them find their purpose uh, and, and getting them back in line with the vision of the company again and get them back on the right seat. Right, right. Just tell me, in terms of being an entrepreneur, uh, Brandon, what, how would you scale the advantages and disadvantages of being an entrepreneur? I mean, a lot of people want to be an entrepreneur. And they, as you were talking about people and employment, I don't think people realize how, how difficult that leadership is. But just, just on, a, on a scale, try and balance those out first. What are the advantages and then disadvantages of being an entrepreneur? Sure. I've asked myself this question many times. <laughs> uh, I, you know, Kevin, there was a time in, in my, myself and my wife's life uh, where we had to make the decision, are we going to scale up this company and grow or are we content? And, you know, yes, ambition plays a, a huge role, but you must understand that ambition can lead you into a lot of responsibility. And, and, and this is what happens. And the minute you start building a company, your responsibility starts going up. So your little boy problems become big boy problems. Yeah. Uh, and um, and it's, a, it's, it's extremely stressful. I can honestly say the, the world of entrepreneurs is not for everybody. You know, um, anybody can do it if they would make the choice to do so. But it is an extremely, you know, volatile lifestyle because you're working on your company 24 hours a day. You know, yeah. and it very rarely gets to the point where you are not too busy to spend time with friends and family, you know. So you sacrifice a hell of a lot in your journey um, yeah. when you start building a big business and, and, and you're an entrepreneur, you know. Yeah. Um, so when you understand that sacrifice and you're willing to make it, you know, then, then you know, that, that's, that's your purpose. But other than that, it is an extremely difficult thing to do. Right. Definitely. I, I often people ask me, is it all worth it? You know, is it all worth it? And I can honestly say success and the financial worth is not what makes it worth it. What makes it worth it uh, is that you can work towards a vision and leave, make a difference in the world. You know, I think that's, that's really what keeps me going at the end of the day, because, um, 
when you become financially successful, you very quickly realize that it doesn't relieve any problems that you may have with yourself, you know. Uh, and that's more in the engineering thing. You know, you need, to, you need to work on yourself and be content. And that's why I say a large percentage of success is actually the component of peace, you know. Um, and you need Beautiful. to find peace. Yeah, you need to find peace in that way of life, you know, right. being an entrepreneur. And, and right. if you can, you'll be okay. Right. So you touched on it's not it's not for everybody. So I want to know your opinion on this topic. Um, are you born as an entrepreneur, or do you think you raise entrepreneurs? I think the the human mind is an incredible thing, and I think if you if you you taught correctly, you know we, we call this neuroplasticity. So the, the brain is a malleable thing. It can, it can literally, you could rewire the hardware and the software component of the way of thinking. So if you're taught correctly, any human being can become anything in which they desire. Um, and I firmly believe this because I've seen the evidence of it in neurogenesis and neuroplasticity and in all the studies across the world. But you've, you've, you've got to have mentorship. You've got to be taught, you know, and, and, right. and, and you've got to be taught by somebody who understands it. You know, and 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 it's so important because there are many people who who start businesses, but they're not entirely sure what the mechanics are and how it really works. And that's where I firmly believe in, in mentorship. You know, you need to ask the questions. You need to remain learned. You know, I'm still learning to this day. There are things I'm trying to mm -hmm. learn every single day. You know, yeah. and I learn new things every day, and I'm open to learning. I'm open to constructive criticism. I want to be better. And yeah. if you want to be better and you want to work on yourself, you have a really good chance of being a successful entrepreneur. But if you right. think you know everything, you're going to struggle. There's no doubt. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting that you mentioned mentorship. So I think a lot of young business people want to do it on their own. They want to go do and build their own stuff. They don't really care too much about what other people think. And I think if you listen to all successful entrepreneurs, you'll always hear, yes, but I had someone that I could listen to, could go to, to could ask questions. But Brenna, I think what would you say is the big reason people don't don't um, don't aspire to have a mentor? I think I think ego. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, there there are too many young people that that live um, outwardly. There's too much ego in, the, in their way. Um, you know, to to re to to rebuild or build something new in the world that's never been done is is if you understand the statistics here, it's, it's almost impossible all right you really got to be building a better model of something that that has already a foundation yes and in order to do that uh, to find solutions you know you need to speak to people who who do this all the time you know you need to learn from people who do things better than yourself um and and if you don't understand that, that you, you're going to fail but ego is definitely the problem you yeah. know too, too afraid to, to ask successful people how did you do it you know mm. What did you do? You know, I um, I uh, I met somebody a while back, very successful elderly gentleman, and I literally forced myself uh, into a, a self invite <laughs> to to dinner at his house. <laughs> and, nice, I like that. <laughs> and um, and you know, I I I I asked him as many questions as I could in an hour. I, in fact, I never ate my meal at all. Uh, he ate his meal, but I never ate mine. And wasn't it wasn't about just, the meal. No, it was not about the meal. I was flooding this 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 gentleman. I mean, this gentleman is, is, is hundreds of millions strong, and I was flooding him with with questions. You know, how does he do his accounting? How does he, you know how does he run his business? What is you know, and 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 this is the thing. You know, you, you learn from people who are who are successful, and you mustn't be afraid to ask them and learn from them. Um, you you cannot do it on your own. There is no possible solution on your own. It does not exist. So learn from people. Remain learned, you know, uh, in your life and your journey. Yeah. All right. So on that point, to becoming a successful entrepreneur, what, what do you think are the five skills that you require from an entrepreneur if you want to be successful? Wow. Or even three. Even three would be enough. Okay. Well, I mean... You, for sure, you have to have vision. There's no doubt. We've we've mentioned it before, but you have to you have to have vision. 
Um, and you need to reiterate that vision without pivoting every day. That's important. Mm. Because if you reiterating that, that vision every day without pivoting, you're actually finding solutions to whatever problems come. Okay. Yep. So, so, so that's, for me, very important. Um, not everybody thinks the same way. Um, but you, you need to have a lot of time spent on yourself in terms of inner engineering. You need to work on yourself. You should never be satisfied with what you are and who you are. People often say you, you should be content with who you are. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you should never be content. You should always strive to be better as a human being, you know, uh, better moral values, better etiquette, you know, um, you know, better ethics. You know, ethics is fundamental in business, you know, work with ethical people, you know. Um, and I think, I think you need to understand that you know, life is a gift uh, and it's a short one. It's a really short process. You know, people often say, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 40 years of age. Where did the time go? You should be very well aware of where the time went. You know, you should take that information in, you know, and, and understand the importance, you know, of your life because every human being is extremely important, you know, and, and you need to understand, you know, your importance in, in your journey. Um, right. I think if I was to advise, you know, some of the young individuals out there, um, you know, make sure that you, 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 you spend time with people that have done it, learn from them, you know, um, from a young age, build things, build new things, because we need to build better things. Everybody en ends up in a, in, a in, a, in a job where they're not contributing to change. And we need the world to change. This, this is the purpose of life, is to, is to, is to get better, you know, and to grow. And unfortunately, we're, we're now in this survival mode in the world. And this is not good for our genetic evolution. We, we, we do not need to be, or our cognitive genetic evolution. We, we do not need to be working on survival. We need to be working on, on, on growth and empowerment. You know. So I think, yeah, Kevin, these are sort of the things I stand for. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I think anybody's capable if they really want to. Um, and I think that, you know, if I could just say anything, please, you know, speak to people that have done it, spend time with them, ask them questions. The, the lessons you're gonna learn are extremely valuable. Um, you know, I, I'll give you an example. This gentleman that I spoke to, you know, he, I, he, he had some, some beautiful cars, uh, a, a Lamborghini for one, a Ventador. It's like a 10, 10 million man vehicle. Right. And I said to him, you know, how did you buy that car? You know, I want to buy a car like this one day. And, uh, and he said to me, you know, you must always understand. And I said to him, you know, I, maybe if I can go and I can, and I can make a loan from the bank and et cetera, et cetera. He said to me, no, the problem is not the bottom line. The problem is the top line where that income is coming in. That needs to go up. Yeah. <laughs> Before you buy the car, hundred <laughs> percent. You know, we talk, it's not we talk about affording the car; it's about building the source of the car. Exactly, exactly the case. You know, and a lot of youngsters, you know, they, they just they just look at life differently. And I think when you when you speak to people that have that have that have good experience and good knowledge in, in building dreams, um, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn. Yeah, lot. yeah. Don't you think life should have been the other way around? You know, you you get all the money when you're young. And then you spend all of it by the end of your life instead of <laughs> working towards <laughs> it your entire life. And then you can't, you buy the Lamborghini at 75. Like that's the kind of thing that happens to people. So, so you know, that's exactly the case. And, and the, 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 the truth is, is that, and, and that's why I reiterate quality of life. I know so many unbelievably successful, financially successful businessmen who, who, who drive very expensive cars or living in mansions, but they can't enjoy them because their quality of life is so terrible. Yep. You know, you must understand the importance of a good quality life. And that is through processes of training, you know, training your body, that is through processes of inner engineering, working on the mind every day, um, and disease prevention. Disease prevention is everything. You need right. to be putting most of your money in your health and people don't understand that. Most of your money should be going into health, not into all the fancy toys. It needs to be going into your health because there will come a time 
when you, you're 50 years of age, potentially, and you've had your first heart attack, your quality of life deteriorates so much, you know, yep. that you're going to lose your purpose. And yep. that's not something you want to do. So Absolutely, absolutely. So, Brandon, just on that, um, you've grown tremendously as a person as well. You've been speaking about your personal growth. How has entrepreneurship changed you as a person? How has it bettered you as a, as, a, as a person? I think I think it's I think I have a, a better appreciation for life um, and a better appreciation for my responsibility to other individuals, you know, and their lives as well. Because being an entrepreneur, you, you know, your responsibility grows and it grows with employees, you know, because. People think that employees are really just about paying people the salary to do their jobs, and it's so much more than that. You know, it's so mm. much more than that. Mm. Because you play a role in their lives. You know, you're a leader, and you need to be. You need to always be on top of your game and be positive and reassuring and, and help them emotionally and through tragedy and all these things. You know. Yeah. Um, so I, th I think it's it's definitely made me a better person. Um, it's definitely made me more ambitious uh, to, to achieve my vision. And, and that's really what it's done for me. And, and I couldn't be more thankful. Um, I think I, I love my journey. I, I love the gift of life and it's an incredible thing. And, and I wish so many more people would, would, would appreciate, you know, their life uh, more. Uh, they would contribute so much more and they would activate what I call the reticular activating system in the brain, that the filter system. And, and, and this filter system will provide them with more opportunities if they really just, you know, are aware of it, you know, if they're looking for the right things. So, yep. yeah, it's been, it's been good. Okay. So, Brandon, if you have to write a book about your journey as an entrepreneur, what would the title of that book be? Mm. I think the, the title of the book would definitely be that the, the true meaning of success is making someone else's life worth living. Wow. Powerful. And, and that's such a conceptual idea because you can apply that to every single business. I mean, every single business out there should have that as the overarching uh, vision or, or, or drive. How do we change someone's life? That's really what it's about. Absolutely. Because... If you're bettering your employee's life, you're bettering your business. You're bettering your you know, you, you, everything in life is about improving other life. That's really what it's about. Mm. One of the one of the one of our fundamental fundamental moral values should always be how can I better somebody else's life? You know, mm. you know what I what I tell a lot of my employees is that when you're coming to work every day. Pick one of the, your colleagues in the room and in your mind, just tell them, I love you. Right. That's it. Just right. tell them, I love you. In your, you don't have to say it. Yes. Just, just pick one person yeah. in the room and tell them, I love you. Because when you start doing that every day, mm. you know, you start, you start appreciating the journey and, the, and, and life and, and the importance of, you know, of, of your vision and what you're trying to do. Right. You know, so, yeah. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. Brandon, that concludes our interview with you. Thank you so much for being on the show this morning. You are such an inspiring individual. Uh, when I drive past your shops and I see the new human uh, branding, if I see the you know those cans that you put up everywhere in the shopping centers, I I'm so proud to see that happen. And um, it just inspires me to, to be bigger and build bigger and uh, help other people achieve the same. So thanks very much for your time, and thanks for your team as well for allowing you the, this time to spend with me. It's an hour out of an entrepreneur's day. Thanks so much, and I hope to see you soon on a, a, a show in the future. Kevin, uh, thank you so much for, for those blessings, and um, uh, I wish for you great success in your journey, and, and, and may you be everything that you want to be in this world. And, and thank you for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Have a good Friday and a good weekend. We'll chat soon. Thank you again. Be blessed. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye.